going. <clears throat> From the moment I read positive on the pregnancy test, I vowed to do everything in my power to make sure my baby would be safe and well taken care of. I started reading books and articles and found out the proper way to prepare the next safest place to my arms, my baby's crib. Making sure your baby's crib is properly prepared will ensure your child's safety. You follow four easy steps, buying the crib in the crib mattress, the bedding, putting mobiles and crib toys, and finally, the proper way to clothe and place your child in the crib. The first step is buying the crib and the crib mattress. The first thing to remember is to watch for drop down sides. The drop side could detach or come loose, causing a baby to become entrapped and strangle or suffocate in the space between the drop side and the crib mattress. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, at least 32 infants died this way between 2000 and 2010. Uh, all the new cribs that are on the market today don't have drop down sides. This is just something you need to watch if you buy a used crib. Another thing to pay attention to is the slats on the crib should be no more than two and three eighth inches apart. The next thing you're going to buy after the crib is the crib mattress. The crib mattress needs to be at least 51 and three fourth inches long by 27 and 3 fourths inches wide. The final thing to watch for is the Juvenile Products Manufacturing Association certification. All cribs and crib mattresses that are approved for use will have that certification on them. Now that you've bought your crib and the crib mattress, it's time to buy the bedding. You want to remember a bare crib is best. You want to buy snug fitting crib sheets and you want to buy at least three of the sheet sets and two mattress pad protectors. The one thing you don't want to buy or put in your crib is a crib bumper and it looks something like this. Reports show 27 accidental deaths of children ages one month to two years that were attributed to suffocation. 11 of the infants likely suffocated when their faces came to rest against the bumper pad. 13 of the infants died when they became wedged between the bumper pad and another object like the crib mattress. And three infants died when they were strangled by a bumper tie. So this part of the crib bumper. Uh, now they do make crib bumpers that are mesh and those are safe to use, but you still wanna watch the, the bumper ties. After you have the bedding put in the crib, you're going to want to put mobiles and crib toys. Infants who are exposed early to lots of things to look at are said to make more neuronal connections in the brain. Mobiles and crib toys help visual stimulation. The music can calm and help deepen breathing, and it enhances motor skills and hand-eye coordination. When you put a mobile in the crib, you want to make sure it's 8 to 12 inches above the crib so the child cannot get a hold of it. And the nice thing about crib toys is a lot of them have music and a picture. Um, you also want to make sure that when you buy these, they're in bright colors because that's going to capture your child's attention. After you have the crib and the crib mattress put together, the bedding on it and mobiles and crib toys in the crib, the last thing you want to pay attention to is the correct way to clothe and place your baby in the crib. In 1992, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommended that babies sleep on their backs to prevent accidental deaths. As the number of babies sleeping on their backs has increased, SIDS, or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, cases have decreased. The reason they say to uh, put your babies on their backs is a child that is young, one month, two months, three months old, they don't have the strength to lift their heads up. If you put them on their stomach, their face could go face down into the mattress, suffocate, they can get carbon monoxide poisoning, things like that. Common misconception, people believe that babies need to be in the warmest environment possible. They think they need to have lots of blankets and quilts and then the room needs to be really warm. That's not true. 
You don't want to use quilts, so you don't want to use heavy blankets, anything like that. That can also cause your child to suffocate or get carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, if you're going to use anything, you're going to want to use a sleeper sack, something like this. The feet and legs are inside, they stay warm. And you're going to want to dress your child in layers. That way in the middle of the night, if you go in to feed and change the diaper, they feel too warm. You can take layers off. They feel too cold. You can put layers back on. Now you have the crib, the crib mattress, the bedding put in there, mobiles and crib toys, and you know the proper way to clothe and place your child in the crib. Because of your knowledge, you can make sure your baby's crib is properly prepared and have the peace of mind that your infant is safe. From the positive sign on the pregnancy test to birth and caring for my baby, my newfound wisdom has given me the ability to follow through on my vow to do everything I can to keep my baby safe. I hope this knowledge can do the same for you.